let's get started with the stoves. Um, last year, I picked up a Pocket Rocket Deluxe by MSR. A bunch of reasons why I picked up this stove. First of all, it's, it's a really popular stove, and I think it is a fantastic product. Large support base for larger pots, piezo ignition, and a well-designed burner, very similar to the Soto burner. So pretty good performer in wind, it's, it's supposed to be. And it's and regulated also. For years before that, I was using the BRS 3000. Great little stove, never had any major problems with it, never failed on me. Super lightweight, under an ounce versus three ounces. And for years before that, this was my main stove. This has seen a lot of use. Cat can stove, just cat food can and punched with a hole punch. Just put your pot right on that and you need a windscreen. This thing basically weighs nothing. Why did I change from this to this and then try out the Pocket Rocket Deluxe? I got sick of this one being uh, tippy. You know, it's slow. Sometimes it's pretty affected by wind. It's not very stable. You knock it over, all the fuel falls out. The issue I had with this stove was in some pretty heavy wind. I uh, just never got my water to boil. It was a problem. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try something different. And uh, I asked MSR to send me this one. It's a very good performer. It definitely outperforms the BRS 3000 in wind. Can definitely handle heavier pots, but it's 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 a heavier unit. And um, you know, I didn't find it get, that it gave me that many advantages over the BRS 3000. If I had to pick between one of these two for the rest of my life, I'd probably go with this one just because. You can handle bigger pots on it. I think it's a better quality product. But what did I choose to use instead of this? Well, for years, I'd been toying with the idea of trying out a caldera cone. If you're not familiar with a caldera cone, uh, I think there's really only one company that makes them. It's basically an alcohol stove that has a windscreen that's an integrated pot support. The model that I've been using pairs up with this little ever new pot. This is, I think it's 600 ml or I mean 400, it's, it's a half liter. It's a tiny cook pot. And you know, honestly for my trips, I typically boil water in the morning to make coffee and then boil half a liter of water or less in the evening for dinner. So I really don't need much of a stove. I got the Caldera Thai Tri from Trail Designs, and you know what? It works. It works much better than the cat food can stove. It's very stable. The burn times are very consistent. So I get a half liter of water to boil in probably around eight minutes, but I've used it in multiple seasons, cold weather, it just works and it's extremely light. So the whole setup, the pot, the windscreen, the stove, and also a little plastic fuel bottle comes in at six ounces all combined. Now, when you compare it to something like this, this is three ounces or just under, but you always have to take into consideration the weight of your fuel canister also, and I always, look at the, the empty weight. So the empty weight of one of these small four ounce cans is three and a half ounces, so right around 100 grams. So this is six ounces altogether, excluding the cook pot. And the other thing that I like about it is that I can just bring the amount of fuel that I need for a trip. This bottle will typically do me two nights using basically two ounces of fuel per day and then you can just scale up with a bigger plastic bottle if you're, if you're going on a longer trip. I can also buy a one gallon jug of denatured alcohol for $17 in Canada or under $20. And that's enough for something like 75 nights. So very economical. But what I like the most about it is that it's just so easy when I get home from a trip to just top it up, be ready for the next trip, or just bring the amount of fuel that I need. Is it something that I recommend to everyone? Definitely not. I think for most people, um, a canister stove is, is the way to go, but 
if you're looking for something that's kind of a little bit different, uh, you like that adaptability and, the, and being able to, you know, choose how much fuel you bring and change that and, and, and get fuel almost at any hardware store, this is a really great option. I'm really quite happy with it. The problem with this is that it's paired to a specific pot. So, um, you know, you can't just mix and match at whenever you want. You've got to sort of keep it as a dedicated system. Next up is water filters. So I started using a B free in 2019 also did a trip in Colorado and that was probably my first big trip using the B free water filter with the uh, bag that it comes with. So, uh, you know, very simple system. I think it was right around in 2019, 2018 that these came out. Before that, I used chemical drops. So Aquamira or, or whatever you call it, um, the A and B solutions. I'd make a little premix and, and that works very well too. It's very light. Uh, there's a cost to it that, you know, you're always kind of having to top that up. But moved over to this, the Be Free always worked well for me. But I decided to give the Platypus Quick Draw a try. So the Quick Draw is made by Platypus. It's, I think it's a pretty interesting product in a lot of ways. It has some good ideas. I like that it has a nice closing cap. I like that it can screw on to a standard pop bottle. And then it also has this kind of proprietary quick twist lock that goes on the bag that it comes with. And the bag that it comes with has a pretty large opening, um, not as big as the 42 millimeter ones that are work with the Be Free, but definitely bigger than a pop bottle. The bag that it came with has a little handle so you can scoop water pretty easily. Now, if you just compare these two, they're the same technology. They use a hollow fiber filter, so it's all of these little strings of filters that, um, the water has to get into and then, then it all comes out into sort of the ends of those little fibers. So same technology in this one, the, the hollow fiber is just packaged in a, in a different way. For all I know, made in the same factory. I, I have no idea, but there's, there can be only so many places that manufacture these things in the world. My guess is comparable in terms of performance. Uh, just slightly different form factor. What ended up happening, uh, a few things. First of all, I noticed that when you have this, um, it, it works, it works well, the flow rate's good. I found that it was a little bit annoying, but you'd use it and then you'd sort of have to just put it away and roll it up and you know have them separate. You'd have to put the cap on this or else it would leak water into your bag and whatever. On one hand, it's good to have the cap uh, in case you maybe have to bring this into your sleeping bag if you need to prevent it from freezing, which is which is a great feature. One of the last straws with this filter was that the bag that it came with, the, the, the reservoir that it came with, literally exploded on my face while I was on a trip filtering water. Filling up my platypus filter. And I went to go drink from it and the back just completely exploded out. The volume of water was coming out pretty good, so I wasn't squeezing it like crazy. Luckily, it does fit on um, standard bottles and I was able to use it on my smart water bottle. So I was able to do the trip, no problem. To give it kind of one last chance, I picked up one of these knock bags, two liter bag or three liter, what is this? Two liter bag. It's got that big opening, which is nice, screws onto the filter, so you can fill this up really quickly and then filter. I found this just gave me a bit of friction to use. And what I did from there was I picked up one of these HydroPack Flux. I really like that I can just go scoop up water, get my filter in there. I can either just throw that in my pack and filter it a little bit later. I can drink it out of the bottle. Uh, it works for me. I've never had any issues with these filters. They typically last me about a year or they last more than a year. I, I tend to replace them every year, even if they're still working and not having any flow issues. So back to this, I'll typically filter it into another bottle if I'm just gonna be using that one, then make sure that it's completely empty 
roll it up and shove it in the side pocket of my bag, just like that. And I don't have to worry about it um, having two parts or coming apart or whatever or having uh, or anything. I can leave the filter on it and it's not this big dangly piece that's on top. It just works really well. It's streamlined. I prefer this over platypus. Let's get into shelters. In 2023, I used the XMID Pro and the XMID Solid. I used the Pro all summer, so in really in real summer conditions, uh, no crazy weather in terms of snow or anything like that. On the shoulder seasons, I used the XMID Solid. And from that, I decided that the XMID Solid is definitely the one for me in those challenging conditions. The XMID Pro was too small for me and I decided to go back and try the Altiplex. Now luckily, uh, Justin was able to lend me the Altiplex. He wasn't using it this year and I used it for several trips. And the Altiplex is a very good tent. A lot of people like it and a lot of people use the other um, Z packs, Plex tents, so the single pyramid style, all in one tents that have the built in bug screen, built in floor. And it's a great tent, has a lot of things going for it. And I, and I understand what people like about it. It's very simple, it's very quick to set up. I find the setup a little bit more adaptable than the X mid, in that if the ground's a little uneven, because the fly doesn't pitch down right to the ground, it can accommodate a few, uh, a little bit more of a bump or a dip or things like that. So I find that it is quicker to set up than the x -Mid. The problem for me with the Altiplex, and I'm sure it's the same for the Plex Solo and, and, and all of those single pole pyramid tents, is I don't find them very user friendly. I find getting in and out of them, it's nothing to do with the, the so-called rainbow door, just getting in and out of them, it, it's sort of a, a, a crawling, an exercise in gymnastics. And once I'm inside, I find the space very limited. Even though the Altiplex is touted as a shelter that's good for tall people, and I do fit in it, I just come very close and I do touch the insides quite a bit. I, I worked on the pitch a lot, depending on how you angle the whole shelter, you can kind of maximize the inside or you can really lose a lot of space. I worked on the pitch, I, I figured out what was the maximum space I could get out of it and I still found that the roof was just so close to my face and so close to my feet that if I shifted at all in the night and wasn't perfectly centered, my sleeping bag ended up against the walls and that led me to the main problem which is condensation. I was out on one trip where it didn't rain, cooled down in the night, and it was just the perfect conditions for condensation and the tent just filled up with moisture. In the morning, my sleeping bag was soaked. I had to wipe out the tent a lot. It would have just been a problem if it had been a longer trip. That to me is a deal breaker. I It's the number one thing that I avoid is moisture inside my shelter and for me that means some kind of double walled tent or a tarp with some kind of bug protection or something like that the all-in-one or the hybrid shelters whatever you want to call them the shelters that have a single wall and some kind of floor attached with a little bit of bug net around them it's just not for me i could see myself using a tent like that in the future on a really quick overnighter where weight was the absolute premium. And I knew that basically the weather wasn't gonna be that bad and condensation might not be that much of an issue. But honestly, in a situation like that, I'd probably be more inclined to use a very small tarp and some kind of bivy. You're just gonna end up with an even lighter shelter, possibly, and not have to deal with that condensation, not have to deal with crawling in and out of your tent. There's no such thing as the perfect piece of gear. Everyone has what they value most. Some people it's ease of use, some people it's weight, some people it's durability, some people 
it's something that can kind of do it all. If you want to see all of the gear that I use on a typical trip, especially going into the shoulder seasons, check out this video right here.